night from two portions of scripture, Romans chapter 8, verses 24 and 25. We'll be reading out of the King James Version. Then we're going to read in the book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. I want to uh, preach what I feel like the Lord has laid on my heart tonight. I want you to look at the scripture and sincerely let it speak to you. The scripture says, for we are saved by, and say this word, we're saved by hope. Now that's not talking about your salvation experience because the scripture plainly says we are saved by grace through faith. Uh, this is not talking about your salvation when it says you are saved, but it's talking about that keeping power that saves you on your daily life. You are saved by the hope that you have. If you don't have any hope, you're, you're going to be limping through life. But the apostle said to the Roman church, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not really hope. What's that saying? That's saying that we're not saved by the things we can touch and feel and see. Many of you might have a wallet or a purse tonight and you've got X amount of dollars in there. You can see that. You can feel that. You can spend that. But your hope is not in those dollars. But the scripture says, for what a man seeth, why did he yet hope for? You don't have to hope for money when you've got it in your hand. Go to the next verse. But if we hope for that, we see none. The invisible things. Then do we with patience wait for it. I want to preach tonight on this subject about finding hope in 2021. This world has got to find hope. Because there's a lot of people out there right now that are desperately looking for something to hang on to, some hope to cling to. And even in the church, some of us are wondering, what is 2021 going to hold? I'm telling you, you've got to hang on to some hope in certain things because the Bible says the only thing that's going to save you at the end of the day is how much hope you have. How much hope do you have in your heart in the invisible God and in the invisible things that faith has yet to bring to you? In the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 4 and 5 says, Since we heard of your faith in Christ, Christ Jesus, and of the love that you have for all the saints. Aren't you glad you go to a church where the saints love one another? Hallelujah. I wouldn't want to be a part of a church where people are fighting and fussing and arguing and debating and biting one another, talking about one another. No, life church is a church where we do life together. Yeah. And when our brother's down, we're down and we pick them up. And when we see somebody getting blessed, we're happy for them because our day is coming to be blessed. Hallelujah. Then in verse 5, it says, because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. There is the key to what I want to preach tonight. If you're looking for hope and trying to find hope to get through 2021, you're going to find it in your faith in the word of truth and the gospel. How many is glad that you heard the gospel one day? Amen. How many is glad that even though you've been saved a lot of years, you've still got hope in the book, and you've still got hope in the gospel of Jesus Christ? Amen. Praise God. 2020 has been a disappointing year on many levels. I know it has. You don't have to lie about it and place a, a, a plastic smile on your face and act like it was all great. It wasn't. There was a lot of disappointing things on many different levels. People are desperately looking for some kind of hope in this world. My wife said today, and it's so true, how in the world do people get through life without Jesus, without the gospel, without the hope that only Jesus can bring to his people? Right. How in the world do they do it when they have no hope of heaven, no hope of 
the saving power of the Holy Spirit and something to look forward to. I've got something to look forward to. I don't know about you. Amen. Hallelujah. Vacations have been postponed. Weddings and anniversaries and new jobs or promotions have been put aside and we've been disappointed and uh, things that you normally get to do in a year. Some of you had to curtail your Thanksgiving uh, festivities with your family. You couldn't have Christmas the way you normally did. It's disappointing. And uh, there are things that we used to look forward to, but now we don't look forward to them. I used to love when the church would fill up with people and we were hugging one another, shaking one another's hands, cracking jokes and loving on one another, having them wonderful pensions at the dining hall where we ate too much uh, of all the good stuff we bring to those. I miss those things. It's disappointing that we don't have those. And uh, you can't even go to a concert. You can't even hear Christian music or whatever music you like. You can't go to them because of this thing called COVID. And even some in the church have forgotten where to find hope. Yeah. Right. Where do we find hope in 2021? Well, I've come to tell you tonight that the Lord wants you to know there is hope to be found for each and every one of us, as long as we have got our faith in Jesus and we're holding to the promises in this book, and we have a hope of heaven that is soon to come. Amen. Hallelujah. I think every Christian needs to look in the Bible and see where those early Christians found hope. Because what we're facing is nothing. This crisis, this epidemic, is nothing compared to what the early believers had to go through. The early believers, I'm, I'm not playing down what we've been through in 2020. It hadn't been easy. But stop and think about the, the early Christians. They faced an immediate crisis. As soon as Jesus went up and the Holy Ghost came down and they were following the teachings of Jesus, immediately they were in a heavy crisis. From the outpouring of the Holy Ghost at Pentecost, the early believers were hated immediately. Thank God in America, the Christians are still tolerated. We're not hated yet. But we better have some hope to hang on to when they do start hating us. Because the apostles and the early Christians were jailed. They were cast out of the temple. They were beaten. And they were martyred within no time. The Roman government at first tolerated the new Christians, but strife between the Jews and the Christians caught the attention of the Romans and the gospel was now being accepted by Roman citizens. And the Roman citizens were saying, we now believe in Jesus. And the government rulers were saying, oh, so Caesar's not your Lord. You're saying that Jesus is Lord. And that's why the early Christians were tortured. That's why as time went on and, and Rome burned and Nero looked at these Christians, he hated them. He burned them at the stake. And he threw them in the arena with lions just for sport. You see, they had a crisis on their hands. The church was scattered and in many cases they had no place to worship. It would be like the government coming in and shutting this place down. And we would have to secretly go from house to house and hope they're not watching us and have church and tuck our hands under our legs so they wouldn't hear us clapping and praising the Lord. Right. That would be a crisis. Yeah. And that's what the early church was going through. The apostles who walked with Christ were now being killed openly and publicly and Peter was crucified upside down and Andrew was also crucified and James was publicly executed by a sword being ran through his body. John was boiled in oil but he did not die because you see the miracle power of the Holy Ghost was still alive and well and until God wanted him to go to heaven he wasn't going to heaven. You see, there's a hope that we have because until the Lord says it's your time to go, you're not going anywhere. Right. Hallelujah. I should have been dead 
yet within the first 24 hours of my life. But when God has his hand on you, you're not going anywhere. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Philip was either stoned to death or beheaded. Bartholomew, and I know this is graphic. I hope you can take it. But Bartholomew, the follower of Jesus Christ, the apostle that followed and walked with the Lord, they filleted his skin off of his body, and then they beheaded him. Thomas was killed by having a spear ran through his body. Believe me, you might think you're strong in the Lord, but if they were doing those things today, some of you would run and hide and say, I don't want anything to do with the church. You would abandon your faith. But I'm telling you, the only thing we've got hope in, the only thing that will bring us through, no matter what comes in 2021, you better hang on to this book and every promise that's in it. You need to hang on to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Never forsake it. When they try to play down Christianity and they mock you and make fun of you, you hang on to the gospel. You hang on to the truth. You hang on to the fact that if the trumpet sounds, guess where you're going? You're going to heaven to be with the Lord. That's the beauty of the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. The early Christians had to find ways to adapt to a very real crisis. But you have to ask the qu yourself the question, where, in the middle of all that, where did they find hope? <laughs> have you ever thought about it? If they would come and take my wife and burn her at the stake, where would I find hope? If they would come and shut every church down in Elwood, Indiana, and say you're not having church, we don't care what you want. You're not allowed to do it. You think it's not possible, but it's already happened in California. Sure. Right. We used to think it wouldn't happen, but where do you find hope when the hard times come? In 2021, I want you to know there's a place to find hope. Paul told the Roman believers who were most at risk for losing their life, our hope is not and what is seen here in this world. Get your eyes off of NBC, CNN, Fox News, because you know what they report? They report what is going on down here. They'll never tell you about the hope at Calvary. They'll never talk about the blood of Jesus that will forgive you of all their sins. No, you need to push away from the TV. Get back in the book. That's where your hope is going to be found. Your hope is going to be found in the fellowship of believers who love Jesus Christ and put him first. Hope is found in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We hope for what we don't see. None of you see heaven. None of you see God. So why do we continue to believe in this invisible God? Why do we continue to believe in a heaven? Listen, my whole life, I've heard it preached that Jesus is coming back. And he still hasn't come back. But I still have hope because I believe this book is true. I've seen it with my own eyes. I pray for people and I've seen them healed instantly just like the Bible says they can be. I have seen people's lives completely turned around. Their life seemed hopeless and their life seemed lost. But Jesus is still in the saving business. Jesus is still in the healing business. Jesus is still able to turn the city of Elwood around. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I believe there's hope in this world. Our hope is in what we have faith for. Right. Ask yourself, what do you believe in God to do? We heard testimony tonight of good things God has done in the middle of a pandemic. What are you believing God for? That's where your hope is. Not in the things you can see, because tomorrow they may come and hand you a pink slip and say that you no longer have a job. Where's your hope then? Your hope is in this promise that says, I'll never leave you, and I'll never abandon you, and I'll always provide for you. Amen. We've got hope in this thing called the church. Yes, amen. Amen. Glory to the Lord. Those early Christians found hope in the good news of the gospel. And it doesn't matter who's president. It doesn't matter who's pope. 
It doesn't matter what they tell you on the television or on Facebook or on Snapchat or on Instagram. Those things are all focused on what's going on down here. Get your eyes on the right thing if you want to find hope. Get your eyes on Jesus. It's just like Peter. When Jesus came walking on the water, for a little while, he was walking on the water too. But he got his eyes on the world, on the winds and the waves. Get your eyes back on Jesus. That's where your hope is found. Praise God. The gospel tells us that by believing in Christ Jesus, we can have every one of our sins completely forgiven and washed clean. You might be here tonight and you might be watching on Facebook and think my life is a mess. I've backslid so many times. I've been married five times. I've been to the bar and got drunk a million times. But I'm telling you the hope of the gospel is the fact that Jesus can come in and wash you completely clean. Make you a brand new person. He will forgive you for all the things that you have done. Amen. Praise God. The hope of the gospel is that we will live eternally in heaven and be rewarded extravagantly in heaven for what we've done down here. We sang the song tonight, Oh, I Want to See Him. I wonder if we still get excited about seeing Jesus face to face. I wonder if we still get excited and have hope in the fact that if we die, our next step is on streets of gold. I'm here to tell you that when I go from this life into the next life, there will be no taking insulin shots. There will be no worry about hearing aids. I'm telling you, I've got a hope. And it's in heaven. It's not down here. Bless the Lord. The good news says I have inexhaustible love from an eternal God. And I have the good news of the power from on high. My hope is in the Savior who's coming back for me. Can you say amen? Amen. Praise God. Romans chapter 5 and verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. What are you standing on today? What are you standing on? What they tell you on the news, are you standing on the fact that you have a job? Or are you standing on the fact that Jesus is your foundation? Praise God. We stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. What you really stand on in life that puts a smile on your face and allows you to keep going when everybody self says give up is the amount of hope you've got in your heart. If you have no hope, you need to come back to the Savior because he's the only one that can give you hope in this world. Right. Where do we find hope in 2021? Where are we going to find it? We don't know what's going to happen. No. The Bible says you're not even promised tomorrow. Right. But it didn't tell you to worry about it. No. Amen. Sometimes we get so worried about what hasn't happened yet or we get worried about the the love we haven't received yet, or we get all worried about many different things that are in our minds. They're just thoughts. Right. But look at what Titus chapter 2 verse 13 says. It says, looking for that blessed hope. If you want blessed hope, here's what Titus said. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. You know what blesses me with hope? You know what gets my fire lit? Is the fact that somewhere in the near future, I believe our ears are going to hear the sounding of the trumpet. And the rapture is going to happen. And guess what? I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that I'm going up to meet the Lord in the air. That gets me hope. Hallelujah. I find hope in the fact that Jesus Christ is coming back for me. Because he loves me. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. I'm almost finished. It says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You know what? You can be having the worst day. And all of a sudden a song will come on the radio. A good Christian song. And you'll go, you know what? I'm happy now. Your eyes pop open. Your spiritual eyes pop open. You get a revelation about who God is and how much he loves you. Amen. 
It's that the eyes of our understanding being enlightened that we may know what is the hope of his calling. You've got to have hope in the fact that Jesus called you, yes you, out of all the billions of people on this planet, God said, hey buddy, hey lady, I want you to come and be part of my family. Out of all the billions of people, Sister Teresa, God said, I want her. I know she's messed up in her life. I know there are things she's not proud of, but I want you to come. I'm adopting you into my family. You're going to be my child. There's hope in my heart because I could be sitting on a bar stool tonight, drunk out of my mind, ready to walk out and get in my car and drive drunk and crash and go to a devil's hell. But God saved me. Amen. And he saved me just in time. Amen. Bless the Lord. I'm ready, getting ready. The scripture says we have a hope of this calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. You know, we're us church kids, us Holy Ghost field kids, we're getting an inheritance. When my father passed on, he didn't have anything to leave me except a couple of guns that I idolized and, and a few suits of clothing that I had to have altered because I wasn't that tall. And, uh, but it wasn't anything, no millions of dollars, nothing excessive. But in Christ Jesus, I have an inheritance, a great inheritance, an inheritance that is to the saints and only available to the saints. Do you know that everybody thinks they're going to heaven? I preached enough funerals in this town. Everybody says, oh, heaven got another angel. But listen to me, unless you're born again, you're not going to heaven. Right. But us Holy Ghost filled folks, uh, we're going to heaven. Yes. And we've got something to look forward to. It's called an inheritance. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 4 says, There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. The only hope that really lasts, uh, the only hope that really survives is, is the hope in the fact that I was called out of this world and brought into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody said, oh, I bet you think you're special. Yes, I am. <laughs> out of all the millions of people on this planet, God picked me. Yeah. But here's the beautiful thing. God will choose you too. All you've got to be willing to do is say, God, I'm a mess, I'm a sinner, but I'm repenting of my sins, and I'm going to strike a brand new way of living. I'm going to follow you, and guess what? Faith will take you in to a born-again experience. Is there other things you need to do? Sure, there are some other things you need to be obedient in. But you've got to start somewhere, and you've got to believe in the fact that Jesus loves me enough to die for me and and resurrect for me, and I can be born again. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 15, verse 4 says, We, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. You know what's got me through 2020? The scriptures. Amen. The promises. Honey, how many times have we sat at that breakfast table and I've given you five Promises You've given me five promises out of our little daily bread box. I know it's old and it seems like it's simple. But there have been times she said, ooh, that one's for me today. <laughs> Hallelujah. And there have been times I've turned the scripture over and read it out loud. And I've said, I'm setting this one aside. Don't put it back in the box. The Lord's showing me something. The Lord's given me something. You see, we daily feed on the hope of the promises of God. Right, amen. You want to know where to find hope in 2021? Get in his word. Yes. Get in prayer and say, God, I need to hear from you more than I need to hear from the president, more than I need to hear from the CDC. I need to hear from you. I need you to tell me how to walk, where to walk, what to do, and where to do it. Amen. And God will surely help you. Romans chapter 15 and verse 13 says... Not the, not the God of hope. The God of hope fill you with all, if I know the, re the next word, joy. Amen. See, when you've got hope, God will add to it joy. Amen. 
And with joy, he adds peace. You see, when you get hope, you also get some byproducts of hope. You get joy and you get peace in believing that you may abound in hope. Everybody else can be so sad. Everybody else can be a, a basket case. Everybody else can be singing the blues. But you can abound in hope and have peace in your heart and have a joy in you that nobody else has. Because it's through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that in 2021, it will be a year of hope. Listen to me. You've got to mark this down and believe it for yourself. In 2021, it will be a year of hope for all of the saints. I can't answer for those who refuse and reject Christ. I can't answer for people that have their hope in the bottle. I can't answer for people who put all their hope in the pills. But I can tell you, if you've got your hope in God, you're going to make it. Amen. You're going to do just fine. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is a year of hope for the saints if we look to the scriptures and to our soon coming Savior. Yeah. I catch myself saying it often in my heart. Lord, when are you coming? I can't wait till you come and sound the trumpet. Look, you know, I'm not scared of the Lord coming. I don't know if you are or not. There are some people who live in a state of fear all the time. Will I make it if the trumpet sounds? I'm scared. Was that the trumpet? Did I make it? I'm not scared at all. Because I've been obedient to this book. And in the promises of the gospel. And I want you to know that if you have run out of hope in 2020, you can find it in 2021 by believing in the gospel. Amen. Believing in the promises of God. Trusting in his nail-pierced hands. You see, the one who walked on water is able to walk with you through any hardship you might face. The one who rose from the grave when he was dead for three days can take a dead, lifeless situation in your life and resurrect it for you. Somebody said, I don't know if my children will ever be saved. You better get some hope that maybe in 2021, they're going to march into this church, come to an altar, and repent of their sins. Amen. Right. The only thing that's going to get him, get him or her there is prayer that is flooded with hope. Right. Because I know a God who can. Amen. I said, I know a God who can Amen. do the impossible. He still does miracles. He knows exactly what he's doing. Hallelujah. I see the signs. I see them, surely. You do too. But all it means to me is Jesus is coming back. Yeah. Right. I'm so glad I'm ready. Yeah. And I'm glad I'm in the company of people tonight that are also ready. Praise God. We are going to enter into our time of receiving Holy Communion tonight. And uh, I'm so glad that there are born-again folks here that are qualified by the Holy Ghost to receive communion. I made the statement just uh, the last service that my wife and I have received communion at home on many occasions. Because we wanted the Lord to protect us from COVID. Amen. Yeah. It's not whether you receive COVID or whether you receive communion in a church house. But it's, is your heart in the right place to receive communion? That's the most important thing. And I want to read to you out of the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we're going to read verses 23 through 33, just 10 verses. And this is very important because when we receive communion, you'll see how the scripture presents it. We are taking the spiritual equivalent of the Lord's broken body and his blood. That bread does not 
magically transform into the literal body of Jesus Christ in your mouth. That wine does not turn into blood when it hits your stomach. We don't believe that at all. But we do believe that when you receive the body, the spiritual body and the spiritual blood of the Lord, there's power in that. Because just like at Calvary when his body was crucified and his blood was spilled and shed, not only for your sins, but for your healing. Anybody ever, can you testify that the blood still works? Amen. Does the blood still forgive sins? Amen. You better believe it. Does the stripes that were laid on Jesus' back still heal sickness? Yes, yes it does. Let's read verse 23. For I have received of the Lord. The apostle said, I received what I'm about to tell you from the Lord. That which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, take, eat this, my body which is broken for you. And this do in remembrance of me. What we're doing tonight is not just a, a, an old tradition that the church just does just to be religious. We are remembering what was done over 2,000 years ago so that you could be saved, healed, and delivered. It really happened. It really happened. The Bible says that after the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Without the blood, there would be no new covenant. But because of the blood, it made the new covenant official. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is the New Testament in my blood. And this do ye, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. We don't drink the wine and receive the bread just as a custom. We do it to remember the awesome price that was paid so that you could be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 26, for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of my body and blood of the Lord. Now, there are a lot of people that worry when I read that scripture. Am I unworthy? And is there sin in my life that I don't know of? Listen, what this is really talking about, and if you would read all of chapter 11, you would see that the saints were coming together and they were eating and drinking just for the fact that they were hungry. It had become just the time to get together for a potluck supper. And he was saying that this is not what this is. This is a very real thing. So when you come, take it seriously. Consider the condition of your heart. I don't serve anyone who is not born again. And if there's bitterness or hatred or sin in your life that has not been forgiven, if you have not confessed it before the Lord and asked Him to forgive you, don't take the bread and the wine until you have had a moment to pray and repent of your sins. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. That's why I say this is not just a ritual. When you receive the bread and the wine, you are actually spiritually receiving all of God's sacrifice, the Son of God's sacrifice for you. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep or die. You see, we receive communion because it is holy. We receive communion because we remember what Jesus Christ did for us. 
For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. What's that mean? Before you come and take of the bread and the wine, spend a little time saying, Lord, if there's anything in my life, any sin that I've not confessed or I don't even remember doing, forgive me. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one with the other. So I'd like for us to stand tonight. And I know that with uh, COVID and social distancing and all those things, We've taken precautions, we're wearing masks, we're doing all these things. But it doesn't matter if you're six feet away or 60 feet away. You can still pray with your brother and sister. Amen. Right. And here's how you should pray. Lord, if I've done anything to be offensive to my brother or sister that would have caused them to stumble, forgive me. Lord, I ask you to help me if there's any sin in my heart or my life. Forgive me. And it's as simple as that because the Lord hears and answers that prayer Amen. every time. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I wonder right now if we could take a moment and pray one for the other. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that you came, robed yourself in flesh, and Lord, you dwelt among us. Your word says that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. And Lord, if you had not sent your son, we would have no hope. But because you did, because his body was brutally crucified, and because he was buried, and because he rose again, we have the hope of eternal life. Lord, we thank you for the fact that we can repent of every sin we've ever done. God, I pray tonight in Jesus' name that if there's anybody in this room that's asking for forgiveness, myself included, I ask you, Lord, to forgive us all of every sin that we've known or unknown that we've committed. Forgive us, Lord. Cleanse us with your blood. Lord, give us the hope of a clear conscience. And Lord, I pray as we pray for one another, I pray God for this congregation and for those who can't be here when they're watching on Facebook, I pray God that they would be in one mind and one accord. Lord, that we would be brothers and sisters and not enemies. Lord, that we would lift one another up and encourage one another and strengthen one another. Oh Lord, I pray you would bless us to be one body, your body, the body of Christ. And Lord, we thank you today. We ask you, Lord, to bless the bread and bless the wine as we partake of it. And Lord, I pray that the power of your death, burial, and resurrection would be alive and present in each one of us. In the name of all names, the name of Jesus Christ, could we say amen, amen. and amen. amen? Hallelujah. Before we go further and receive communion tonight, I do want to talk about what Jesus spoke of when he did the first communion. He did, in fact, take a towel. And it's all right if you're seated. He did, in fact, take a towel. And the Bible said the God man, Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, took a towel, wrapped it around himself and knelt before all of the apostles' feet. And he took their dirty, crusty feet and washed them yeah. like a servant would do. The Bible says that Peter said, Lord, you won't wash my feet. I won't let you. And Jesus said to him, if you won't let me serve you by washing your feet, you can have no part with me. Right. Amen. What was all that about? 
That was a physical demonstration of servanthood. Now, we don't walk the dusty roads today. We drive in nice cars, thank God. So we don't need our feet washed like they did back then. But I want you in this week coming up to do exactly what Jesus did. I want you to serve somebody else. We don't wash one another's feet except on rare occasions in this church. But we can every day find somebody to serve. And it should be a brother or a sister if possible. If not, find somebody who's worse off than you. Buy them at McDonald's. Help them along the way. But serve them because Christ served you. Amen. I'll never forget many years ago, I was broke down on the side of the road. Had a flat tire. I was down by the side of my car trying to jack up the car. And I looked and saw a saint of God look me in the eye and pass me right on by. Uh, <clears throat> it broke my heart. That should not be in the body of Christ. Amen. No. Love one another. Serve one another. But I don't understand them. Serve them anyway. Right. Serve one another. Christ commanded it. Did he not? <clears throat> Amen. Let's stand once again. Hey, you're going to get your exercise in a church like this. <laughs> Hallelujah. If we could all come forward tonight. I'm going to tell you exactly how we're doing this. When you receive this cup, the bottom cup holds bread. The top cup holds the wine. So that we are not touching everybody's bread and wine. And again, if you're not born again, please do not receive this. But if you are born again, you are eligible to receive this. I'm going to come to you and allow you to get your portion out of this. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your death, your burial, your resurrection. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, you suffered for me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you. About 70 years. Isn't that wonderful? Glory to the Lord. Praise God. If everybody's heart is clear and your conscience is free, if you wouldn't mind, separate those cups. receive your body that was broken for us. Lord, I thank you that you died in my place. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. And you can receive the bread. Hallelujah. so you wouldn't have to be. He was bruised so your mind wouldn't have to be bruised. Lord, we thank you for the blood. The blood that covers our sins. We thank you for the blood 
that heals our wounds. We thank you, Lord, that your blood was taken into heaven and we are made near God by your blood. We can receive Hallelujah. I wonder if we can all lift our hands and thank him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Lord, we remember your death. Yes. We remember your burial, and we remember and rejoice that you rose again. Yes. Thank you. You did it for me. You did it for this church. Thank you, Lord, for the stripes that were laid on your back for my healing. Yes. And the yes. chastisement of my, of my peace was yes. laid upon you. Every mental anguish, every depression, every anxiety, Lord, the stripes on your back yes. were for yes. our healing. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah to the Lord. Praise your holy name. We thank you, God. We give you praise. Thanks in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you received communion tonight? There are no seconds. <laughs> Hallelujah. As you're on your way back to your seat, tell somebody you love them. Oh, somebody really got it. We did. We got it. Hallelujah. Close with a song.